Today I'm going to talk about generating alternating current. In the previous video I talked about what alternating current is, now we're going to talk about how we create it. When we talk about generating alternating current, we usually think of what comes out of the power connector, what comes off the mains or off the power grid, which, whatever you call it in your country. But uh, there are other ways to generate alternating current for other purposes. We'll just give a quick look at all of these. So if we look at a generator that generates alternating current, uh, I'm going to draw a diagram of an electric motor. So we have some magnets. And in between those, we're going to have a coil of wire. And that coil of wire is going to be connected. It's going to be on a shaft. This is pretty hard to draw on a two-dimensional board here. So here's a diagram of a motor. And notice that we have here is uh, the magnets and then the moving armature with the coil. And what we have is a commutator, which moves with the coil. And as it rotates, the commutator acts like an automatic switch, which switches which part of the armature is connected to the output. And so as it rotates, it keeps changing which side is connected. And so we get a pulsating DC. It goes to voltage and then down and up and down and up and down. As that coil passes by the magnet, we get the strongest current, which would be at this peak. And when it's perpendicular to it, we're going to get the weakest point. Now for alternating current, instead of putting the commutator there, we put in a slip rings. And so I'll try to give this a quick drawing here. Here's what a one slip ring would look like, sort of like that. And the other ring like this, kind of difficult to draw on this board once again. Uh, one is connected to one side of our coil and the other is connected to the other side. And as that rotates, the same side of the coil is always connected to the same slip ring. We put a couple of carbon brushes here to take off the electricity. And now, as that rotates between our magnets, when it rotates where the coil is aligned with the magnets, we get our strongest voltage. But then when it comes the other way, it goes the opposite polarity. And notice that now we are getting, as we talked about in our previous video, we're getting a sine wave out of that generator. Now this is the way a generator is usually illustrated when they're trying to say this is a DC generator, this is an AC generator, but that's really not a very practical design. Usually they are three-phase generators, and I'll give a quick drawing of what that is right here. We're going to have three coils of wire, and they are split apart 120 degrees along this circle from each other. And as that, well, instead of the coil rotating, we have a magnet that rotates. I'll show it as a permanent magnet here. And as this magnet rotates by this coil, we're going to get alternate, um, just draw this here. We have alternating current coming off of that coil. And we get alternating current off of each of the three coils. But because they're spaced apart from each other, they don't peak at the same time. So if we draw one here, the next one's going to be time-wise about there, and the next one about there. So they don't happen at the same time. So they're out of phase. They're not timed the same. So we have three different coils, three different phases. So we have what's called three-phase AC. And we do that because it's a very efficient way to generate it. In the power grid, it is actually transmitted in three phases. If you go past a long distance power line, you'll see that there's three wires or groups of three wires. Uh, one common type is going to be the 500 kilovolt line. Looks something like this if I can draw it correctly. I'm probably mangling this, but mangling it really bad. But there'll be three insulators hanging from that, each carrying a wire. And your 500 kilovolt lines tend to be shaped something like that, carrying them horizontally. Other times you'll see power poles that have three. I can draw this correctly. And there'll be three insulators hanging from each one. These are also three phase. These tend to be like 230 kilovolts or less. And so we have three set, actually two sets of wires, three phases here and three phases there. So usually, our electricity is carried long distance in three phases. When By the time it gets to our houses, we're only going to be using one of those. I actually lived in a house that used two of them at one time, but that's a whole other story I'll talk about another time. 
but it's sent across as three phases into industrial areas. They send all three phases because that's a very efficient way to operate electric motors. They have special motors that are designed to operate off all three phases. But when we get to our small businesses or residents, we don't need all three phases. So typically they will just give us one of those wires. So that's how electricity is generated. And in a car, they also use a three phase alternator and they use uh, diodes, which we'll talk about down the road uh, to convert that into DC. So that's one way that AC is generated is with these three phase alternators. And they step that up to very high voltages, transmit it long distances, step it back down, and then split it off three phases to industrial areas and then to residential areas. So I'll take one phase to this neighborhood, one phase to that neighborhood, and another phase to the other neighborhood, giving the people in their houses a single phase. Um, talk about power distribution down the road. I don't want to get into that just now. But you saw the basic design of the generator. The basic design of the generator is we have the three different coils 120 degrees apart with the rotating magnet. Now I showed a permanent magnet, but typically that's going to be an electromagnet. So it's going to be energized by some uh, electrical source. Don't want to get into details on that now, but we have an electromagnet, magnet's a magnet, spinning around inside the three other coils of wire generating the three different phases of electricity. So that's how AC is generated for power distribution. However, there are other sources of AC, such as audio frequencies, radio frequencies that are used in different types of circuits. So I have a pin here that I'm going to pretend is a microphone that would have a diaphragm in it that vibrates with the pressure changes in the air. As that diaphragm moves away from me, the circuitry in there is going to generate electricity that goes one direction. And as it comes toward me, the circuitry in there is going to generate electricity that goes the other direction. Very common type of microphone, not as common as it once used to be, is the dynamic mic, where we have a coil of wire inside a magnetic field. I'll put a little magnet here. And that's going to be connected to our diaphragm. So as that coil moves around in the magnetic field, when it moves one way, it generates electricity going one direction. As it moves the other way, it generates electricity going the opposite direction. So it generates alternating current. And unlike the power distribution, it doesn't generate just one frequency. It's going to be all the frequencies that are hitting it. So your voice will have frequencies anywhere from about 100 cycles per second. Uh, we call them hertz, 100 hertz to maybe as much as 3000 hertz. Uh, we, are, we can hear up to 20,000 cycles per second or 20,000 hertz. And so there's a lot of different frequencies mixed in there, but that is alternating current. Just instead of having a nice clean sine wave, well, it's gonna be kind of dirty, all kinds of frequencies mixed in with it. Still periodic, but because of all the different frequencies, we get a complex waveform out of it. When it comes to um, audio generators, let's say we wanna create a tone, we can have oscillator circuits, talk about those down the road, but an oscillator circuit would have some kind of a transistor or other type of amplifier in there. And once again, we'll be talking about oscillators in detail, but this is basically an amplifier. I'm oversimplifying this by quite a bit, that has some kind of positive feedback where the output is somehow fed back to the input in a regenerative way and causes it to actually start to create waves. Voltage goes up, voltage goes down, voltage goes up, voltage goes down, and it repeats that over and over again. And that creates, guess what, alternating current. And these are used for audio tone generators or music generators. You have a, uh, a keyboard, it's going to have oscillators in there that create these frequencies that are sent to the speaker and you hear them as sounds. But then radio works the same way. We have oscillators. Once again, I'm way, way oversimplifying this. But for radio, we have frequencies, oh, maybe from 100,000 hertz. Once again, one hertz is one cycle per second, up to multiple gigahertz, billions of cycles per second. And we'll just generate one frequency because of the nature of radio, which I'll, once again, talk about down the road in communication circuits. We want a good pure frequency to send out and not interfere with other frequencies. So if we have one frequency that's maybe 100 megahertz, which in the North America is the middle of the FM radio band, uh, if I send out a signal at exactly 100 megahertz, I can use filters to filter out only that frequency and reject one that's maybe at 102 megahertz. 
So my filter only picks up that frequency and someone else's radio is filtered to pick up only that frequency. So we want to have them fairly pure. There's a lot more to it than that, but we'll talk about that down the road. So we generate a sine wave. We modify it in ways to carry information that causes some complications, but we'll talk about that down the road. So we can generate alternating current either with mechanical generators or with oscillator circuits or with devices such as a microphone. Or how about just a piece of wire out in the air? Because you put a piece of wire out in the air, it's going to pick up radio frequencies. It's going to cause currents to go back and forth in that wire as it uh, resonates with the radio uh, frequencies passing by it. And if you get it just the right length, it's going to resonate with certain radio frequencies and we can pick off alternating current of those radio frequencies off of that simple piece of wire just hanging in the air. That's basically all an antenna is. We make some modifications. We can improve the performance of that antenna. But the basic idea of an antenna is just a piece of wire in the air picking up electromagnetic waves, causing electricity to go back and forth inside that wire. Much more about that down the road. So that's also a uh, alternating current generator just picking up the energy out of the air. So we have mechanical generators for generating electricity for the power consumption, or we have oscillators to create alternating current for audio circuits or radio circuits. Microphones can generate alternating current based on the sound waves hitting it, or a piece of wire picks up radio waves and generates alternating current based on the radio waves that are hitting it. So that's how we create alternating current, or in the case of a microphone or an antenna, how we pull alternating current out of the air, so to speak. So that's generating alternating current. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.